it's finally here. The big good luck update we've all been waiting for. Welcome back to Sam Mobile TV. You're here with Daniel. And finally, we have the big good luck home up update that we've all been demanding. Now it's not quite perfect yet in the sense that it's not quite available sort of widespread. You have to kind of jimmy it in to your S25 series. If you sideload something called Fine Lock and then download the APK for home up, you can actually use it. Because at the moment, even if you install the home up APK, it will not be showing in the phone. So you have to go and do that first. We'll leave the links in the description down below. There's a lot in here. So get strapped in and be ready to learn. Now there's some really familiar settings when you go in here, things like the task changer, things like backup and restore, the share manager. None of that has changed. All of that stuff is still as was before. So I don't really want to go into too much detail with these ones because, well, they're the same. There's no difference. What I do want to go through though is the new stuff, the stuff that gives you the most control you'll ever have on a Samsung phone or have ever had on a Samsung phone. That is the home screen, the gesture settings, and the edge panel. Those three are brand new. Let's start with the home screen. What you can see in here is the basic operation and style. Some of these have kind of been from previous versions of One UI and then been dropped for One UI 7, and they just basically get brought back for good luck to give you more control or the same control. So things like being able to control the app icon size, even though you can do that in One UI 7 already, the blur control for the background, something that's always kind of been in and around the software. You can see the differences between zero and 100%. Uh, you've got that in there. You've got the option to loop the home screen pages. Although this is when you've got like Google Home turned off. So currently I've got Google Home turned on and this doesn't work. But if I apply it, and then let's say I turn the Google media page off. I can loop my home screen if I want to. Just an option that's in there. I prefer to have the Google discover media page on just because for me, I like using it. So I'll keep it there. There's also a thing where you can add the finder access from going down on the home screen. So if you swipe down, you can go to the finder. Again, it's not really a big one. It's just something that you can do. The thing I'm interested in is DIY home screen. If I go into here, it gives you kind of an overview of what it does. So you can decorate by adding stickers. You can drag things anywhere on the home screen. It basically frees up entire home grid. Let's show you how it works. So once it's toggled on, you go back to your home screen, pinch to zoom in. And then you've got DIY home at the top. And then from here, you've got unlimited options for customization. So for example, for myself, this morning brief widget that's here, I don't like how it sort of covers up some of my wife's shoulder, but the placement on the grid limits where I can put it. However, I can drag and move it anywhere I want, literally anywhere I want. Any app as well, I can move that in and around sort of where I want. The beauty of it too is if, let's say, for some crazy reason, you wanted to stack things sort of with each other, you can. And you can also decide the order. So you can bring things to the front if you want it to be at the front. Or you can leave it behind. There's the little arrow toggles there that allows you to do that. And even crazier than this is you can add stickers or shapes or text to your home screen in a free format as well. So if I wanted to pick one of these stickers I've made myself, so let's say for example, oh, look at that Exynos 990. It must be a sticker I've made from a while ago. I maybe want to put this somewhere on my home screen, but not be a wallpaper. And then I can drag that and make it go and sit behind the apps that are on the screen. I can change its transparency. I can copy it so I can add in another one. There's just so many options in here or I can delete it. I don't understand why people would want to do that, but let's say for example, you wanted to draw an arrow to an app for games. 
like that's the gaming hub. And then I wanted to add in some text and move that to here. I will like click here to relax. And I've got all sorts of text options. I can change the color. I can drag the text box, make it bigger. And then that's there. And then I can click out and now that's my home screen. Now, is that functional? Probably not in this format, but it shows you what you can do. Someone who's probably got a bit of patience and a bit of time can really organize this in a really fun way. If you don't like any of it, you can just go back to the good lock module, hit reset, hit okay, and it goes back to the way it was before without you having to worry about it. So that's DIY home screen. That's a huge one. If we go further down the list, you can see some other things too, like there's an option to remove the favorites. So favorites being the docked apps down the bottom. So if I delete that, that's gone now. Frees up a bit of real estate and gives me a bit more room on my home screen. Should I not want them permanently docked there? And if I also want to maybe have more, I can increase it to nine and then I can chuck in extra ones down the bottom and you can see it now is a bit bigger, it's a bit more down there. It's kind of reminds me of the taskbar, but obviously it's, it's not. One that I kind of liked is the apply folder for the background color. So if the background of the folder can now actually be the color icon that you've got as well, whereas before it wasn't much prefer that. That's a really cool one. The home screen is especially the DIY home screen. That's the one I imagine most of you will be caring about and wanting to try out. But the other one that a lot of people want to know about is the gestures because Samsung are now giving you the ultimate control over your animations when you close apps. This is what it looks like if it's default. So that's a default animation that Samsung are doing. But if you toggle that on and go into the tuning, you now have extra stuff. So if I go to classic, that's the classic one. If I go and go to elegance, it's going to look a bit differently. So I'll open an app and you can see there's some like, I guess you could say elegance about it. Dynamic, dynamic will make it feel a little bit faster. And you can see that difference in the speed. Like that's a, that's a rapid one. You got sweet. This one will be a little bit slower as you can see there. It's not really designed to be quick. It's meant to be like a nice easing animation to be a bit soothing. Then you've got some simple tuning and it's based by color. So if you want it to be fast, it goes to blue, which I would imagine red would be fast, but here we are. And then if you want it to be sort of a bit more emotional, you drag it this way. And emotional, I guess, just means it has, it takes its time. It's a bit softer and then fast go the other way. You can see how quick those animations are. That is rapid. Uh, let's just the note seven with the S pen coil at the top there. So that's myth shattered, but all of that's nice. You might though want to advance your tuning yourself. And if you click advanced and go to detailed, this is where there's so much more. So if I go into here, you can see, first of all, let's go through the list and just show you exactly how many there is. That is a lot. It gives you some tips down the bottom. So if you don't know where to get started, you can go down there. But like, for example, if I want it to not vibrate as much, when it, the damping or the stiffness, the higher the value, the faster it shrinks. Look at that. All right, that's one element. I can change the, like, what even is this? <laughs> what? even am I looking at here? This is unbelievable how you can tune this. You've got the tracking position. So if I wanted to have it to be down to zero, the more it targets the bottom icon. So that is, this is just wild. You can change the time. Ugh. Everything in here can be changed literally everything. You can change the scale of the wallpaper. So if I want it to be bigger or if I want it to be less, or if I want it to be faster or slower, you can do that. Well, that's not even scaling at all now. 
let's go back here and have a duration to be longer. It's crazy, literally crazy. You can turn on blur if you want. You can, there's a scale here to turn on blur. So if you don't want blur, you don't have to have it. But if you have blur, it'll blur out. There you go. There's one, one element. Then there's the animations of all the apps on the grid. So you can have them come out and be big, or you can have them come out and be small, or you can have them be vertically moved. You can also change the duration of that. And then this one here as well, the interpolator, again, you can change the values of these too. Like it is completely up to you what you can do in here. Wild. Now me, myself, I think that's, that's too much tuning for me. I like the dynamic. I'm going to leave that on because look how fast that is with your animations. Like that is... Oh, I've never seen a Samsung phone do that before. Crazy. Yeah, that is, that's cool. There's other stuff in here though as well. Like you've got a vibration that you can turn on too. So it'll just vibrate. You, you won't see or hear that in the video, but trust me, it's there. Then there's some other stuff down here as well. This is all kind of stuff that's existed before, like gestures in full screen mode like if you're in a game usually it blocks gestures whereas here you can keep it on so anyway there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do in here and yeah it's quite wild last one's edge panel edge panel is something i use frequently multiple times throughout the day if i turn this off this is what your edge panel looks like standard you can scroll up or down and you can fit apps in there for shortcuts if i turn this on and then turn this on it now expands that out where I don't have to scroll and all of my apps show there that I've loaded in. And as you can, as you can see, I've got multiple. If I turn this off and then leave this other one off on, there's meant to be a scrolling for recent apps in this top part here, but doesn't seem to be working. But this one, I like that. I like that it just gives me all of them there neatly organized. So I'm going to be using this one for sure. That is the new home up for One UI 7 and some of the amazing things that you can do in here that I think will just wow a lot of people and allow you to have it any way you like. Honestly, give this a go because there's a lot in here that I think a lot of you will like. Hit subscribe to Same Mobile TV, try this out for yourself. Let me know in the comments how you go with it and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.